36 miles from Wales' capital Cardiff, at the heart of the Wye Valley, you find yourself in Monmouth. The population here is less than 10,000, but despite the small size, Monmouth is a place with a very rich history. Take the Mono Bridge, for example. It's the only medieval gated bridge left in Britain. King Henry V, son of Monmouth, was born here in 1386. With almost 1,000 years of existence, the town survived many conflicts and the Black Death. Monmouth is considered by the Council for British Archaeology one of the 10 most important places in the UK. And some of the best spots of the town are better seen from the top. Here at the top of the Kimmin Hill there is a magnificent view of Monmouth, where key moments in Britain's history have been played out. But a new history is being written here at this moment, and this time words are being shaped in the form of tiny black and white squares. You have probably seen one of these before. They are quick response codes, better known as QR codes. Created in 1994 in Japan to help on logistics in the automobile industry, nowadays they are everywhere, on memory sticks, advertisements, business cards, cupcakes and even giant cropping fields. The reason for this is simple, they hold lots of information and deliver them in a fast way. It's very easy to use a QR code. First, you need a free app that allows your phone to scan these images. Then, you just need to point your mobile to the code and the page is displayed almost instantly. Here in Monmouth, QR codes became the connection hub for an ambitious project. One thousand of them were spread through the town. Each one leads to an article on Wikipedia, the seventh most accessed website on the planet. As the plaque in the sign post explains, this is the first Wikipedia town in the world. This is the man behind all this. John Cummings is native to Momo. And believe it or not, his inspiration for the project came from outer space. I used to get back from school about 4.30 in the afternoon and then Star Trek was on at 6 o'clock on BBC2. Loved the idea of a tricorder and that you could kind of scan something and know what it is. As long as I'm still alive. Do not press me, cling on. I don't care whether you live. You press a button and it makes sort of a widdly wee sound and then it gives you information about that object. The program has been activated. I think it should be configuring the tricorder. I really love the ideas of Star Trek, that technology and engineering and all those things that enable people to do things that they couldn't do before. So I went to a talk by Steve Virgin and Roger Bamkin, trustees of Wikimedia UK, and they did a talk about a project they did in Derby Museum where they wanted to give people information there and then in front of the object. So Roger and a guy called Terence Eden worked together with other people to create a QRpedia, which is basically uh, just a redirect service online that accepts your connection on your mobile phone and then takes you to the Wikipedia article in your mobile phone's language. What sort of physically means is you have one QR code and it works for all language Wikipedias. So I spoke to Steve after the talk and I asked him, could you do this for a whole town? And he said, no, you could do this for a whole town. So I just kind of thought about it and went, OK, I'll give it a go. With the language-friendly QR codes and the help of local and international volunteers, the project created articles for Monmouthpedia in almost 30 languages. Ready to leave the virtual world, Monmouthpedia was launched in the real one in May 2012. We've got such a wonderful base of information now. You know, it's such a densely packed place with history that there's a lot of Wikipedia articles in a short. In addition to the codes in buildings and shops, 
the tourism office created these brochures. Each one has a code scanning trail that shows specific places in the town. The trails are from a variety of topics. Um, there's a food trail, there's a historic trail and an archaeological trail. They group part of the Wikipedia articles into a trail format so people can follow a story around the town. For example, on, the, on one of the trails you'll come to the Shire Hall and there'll be a YouTube video to show you about the Shire Hall, what's inside, what you can note about the Shire Hall. Hello, Borada. I'm Professor Ray Hall from the University of Wales, Newport, and we're going to be taking you on a tour of the historic blue plaques of Monmouth. And you can also be navigated to the Wikipedia article telling you all the factual information about the Shire Hall too. But something here doesn't seem to be working. Since we have arrived, we haven't seen anyone actually scanning the codes. Even though new improvements continue to be made. The county is trying its best to stimulate people to make use of the QR codes. The latest push is a free Wi-Fi network all across town. But are all of these efforts being enough to make tourists become more interested in visiting this place? It seems like the visitors here are more interested in other kinds of attractions. Could the traditional tea and cake time be drawing too much attention? And if nobody cares to use the QRpedia, was the project really worth it? Let's see if the tourists notice the codes in town. Nurse Ruth Hurt was inside one of the museums. She came from Suffolk to visit a friend. While gazing the historical objects, she didn't realize the existence of the codes. So after being informed of their presence and with somebody else's smartphone, she decided to give it a try. Yeah. That's very good. I think it's a really great idea to encourage people to um, connect, especially if they haven't got English as, as a first language. I don't think people of my generation would make the connection. Maybe my, my children would, but I didn't. But I haven't got a smartphone, so that's the other thing. Ruth is not alone. According to the UK's telecoms regulator, more than 60% of the nation's adult population still don't have a smartphone. It's not the case for Mark Richards, who came from Bristol for a day out with the family. Despite having a smartphone and knowing the QR codes technology, he wasn't aware of one thing. When I went online before coming here, we, we looked at some of the reviews at the museum and it, you know, it's, it sounded really good, but it didn't mention about Wi-Fi. It, it, I think highlighting some of the technology they've got here, so the Wi-Fi and the fact they've got the QR codes. Um, I think that would be a good thing to do and, and would maybe encourage more people to come, particularly younger people that maybe aren't so interested in museums, but actually if there's some cool technology there that they can use to, to have a look at stuff, it might be more interesting for them. I think there's a couple of different reasons that maybe not many people use it. We were worried that people would accuse us to kind of ruining the town, sticking these plaques up everywhere and they all look ugly. So we made them as like discreet as possible. And obviously that looks nice, but people don't notice them. I guess also that a lot of people don't know what they are and how it works. I mean, Monmouth has a lot of older people here who may not know how to use it. Um, I think the instructions could be better. This resident of Monmouth agrees. Ian Lewis praises the code's initiative, but he also has a criticism. I think Monmouth Wikipedia is a very good idea. Um, gives people a lot more information about the town and various aspects of it. Um, I just think the, the coding that's used where people access the detail uh, perhaps needs to be a bit clearer on how it's used and more idiot proof and uh, some subtitles explaining the use of it would be a, a good idea, I think. It will take time, but uh, with better um, explanations next to the graphics, um, that would help a lot. This National Trust custodium says that Monmouth is just facing the typical challenges of a pioneer. Getting the whole project off the ground is probably its biggest stumbling block. Being the first town to be a wiki town, uh, Monmouth's going to get the first lot of problems 
which is customising people to the fact that it is there, what they can use it for, how often they can use it, how many applications it can actually have. The age is certainly as a whole slightly older clientele, I'd say, and walkers are reluctant to carry things that they might drop, lose or get wet in a thunderstorm or something. Fancy equipment and walkers are not necessarily um, go together. But despite all of these problems, the creator of the QR codes suggests that the benefits are still to come. でも私のようにLワースですないしとはこれで安心して海外旅行に行けるようになると思います。でも私たちはま、QR コードのアプリケーションじゃなく、次の2点を考えています。QR and with these improvements, where do you think this technology could lead us? I can't imagine myself where it might end actually. I can see you know, some great uses, trails for us as a, a charity, maybe for membership, attracting visitors, informing visitors, attracting volunteers, etc. But the system's only as good as the people uh, know how to use it. So I suspect it will get better and better as people become more accustomed to it. Um, I can't talk. I myself need to get a smartphone and get onto the Wikipedia um, train, really. Uh, so I can only see it getting more and more used and important, really, as it spreads from Monmouth right round the globe. The spread has already begun. Other cities have started to develop their own QR pages. Initiatives are ongoing in Gibraltar, Fremantle in Australia, Prague in Czech Republic and Sayada in Tunisia. The latest one in development is Johannesburg in South Africa. The Joburgpedia will use plaques similar to the ones that were put in Monmouth. There are also independent projects in Lisbon and Rio de Janeiro, where a centennial Portuguese street paving technique is being used to embed the codes in the city's sidewalks. So could people's feedback on these other places be more positive than in Monmouth? Only time will tell. For now, John believes that the goal here has already been achieved, to make Monmouth a visible spot in the world's digital map. I'd love people to think oh well they've done that there we could do something different or you know similar or whatever but to kind of recognize the value of not putting educational information behind barriers I think that's kind of what I think is good about it it is something that's fairly unique at the moment but it's it's just it's not really the unique thing it's just showing people what is good about Monmouth it's it's kind of pointing people towards the history of the town and the kind of you know natural world around it which are the things that are i guess the best things about Monmouth that, and this kind of just says hello these things exist i think that's kind of my my uh, my aim really